A very good morning and welcome to our second hour on this beautiful Wednesday morning. The Financial Clinic, where we talk on issues money. Last week, we began a very interesting conversation talking about the cycle, the path to financial freedom, defining what financial freedom is, and we talked about quite a number of things. I am sure you want to be able to get to that place where you don't stress and you don't worry about money. You have money enough to do what you need to do. How does one even get there? And so we pick up from where we left off last week. Our guest is back with us again, financial coach, Juliet Adhiambo. Is it Adhiambo or Adhiambo? Adhiambo, yes. <laughs> Juliet Adhiambo. Juliet, yes. how are you? I'm very fine. How are you? I'm good. Yes. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Last week we finished and people said we haven't finished and they said you have to come back. So <laughs> thank so you. I am back. Thank you for coming back. Thank you so Take much. Take us back to last week. What mm -hmm. are some key things we mentioned last week? Yeah. So last week we started the conversation on what financial freedom is mm -hmm. and what it is not and what's the difference between financial freedom and financial independence. independence yes. Yeah. And I mentioned that uh, um, I consider financial independence to be a higher goal mm -hmm. uh, because then your money, you actually don't have to uh, do active work to sustain yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So while financial freedom, you um, you really have what you need plus more, but you're still working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then we also talked about the fact that if you're really trying to achieve financial independence and freedom, then you have to know what you want money to do for you. Exactly. And then you have to know your numbers, mm. right? So we talked about uh, the need to understand what your lifestyle costs you, because really that's what you're planning for, mm -hmm. including the plans that you have in the future mm. for your money and um, what that will cost you to do, right? So because now then you have a number, you know where you're going and yes. you know what it will cost you to get there. So then you come back and work backwards. And mm. then that will then influence some of the decisions that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis because you have a plan and you have a vision for where you're going, which is something that a lot of people usually don't. I think for me that was a, 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 an eye-opener. Mm -hmm. Because you said when we are talking about financial freedom or even financial independence, it means different things to different mm -hmm. people. And unless you know your numbers, yes. you can't define what that no, is for you. No, you can't. Yeah. You know, so what may be financial freedom for you mm -hmm. may not be what is financial freedom for me absolutely absolutely you know? and i thought mm, no wonder then many of us may not necessarily get there because we haven't even defined it we haven't defined it yeah. and it is defined in numbers uh, this is the other uh, reason why i differentiate between the two most people when they talk about financial freedom mm -hmm. they don't have a number it's usually a feeling like i'll know when i get there uh, yes, <laughs> yes. but when you talk about financial independence mm -hmm. there is an exactness to it uh, and you have to put numbers to it and you have to do the math to calculate it so that mm -hmm. you have actually uh, what the target is yeah. Okay. Mm. I'm thinking about debt. Mm. If there's one thing that a lot of people are trapped in and they don't know how to get out mm -hmm. of or they have many questions about, mm. it is the whole issue of debt. Yeah. Especially nowadays because it's very easy to access it. Yes. I remember back in the day, you needed to go with somebody to the bank to recommend you. Yeah. You had so many forms to fill. You had to wait for such a long time to know yeah. if it has gone through or not. Nowadays, it's very easy. It's very easy. <laughs> it's funny that we ask because uh, last night I, I got like this this idea in my head mm -hmm. that I wanted to, to test out uh, a lot of this um, uh, lending, lending lending apps, apps yeah yes. because i'm not I, I don't actively use them mm -hmm. however in most of the time when i'm talking to my clients there's always um it comes up it comes up and so yes. oftentimes even when i'm sharing about what to do about them it's not from my own experience because i personally don't use them mm -hmm. so i wanted to go and test test it out yes i will go and do the experiment and come back <laughs> with results <laughs> yes but um so when, uh, w last week i talked about the financial planning ladder mm. and uh, there, uh, on that ladder um there's the question that people ask me is where does debt come yeah. into this picture mm -hmm. now we said that at the bottom is when you don't have any job so mm -hmm. when you come to me, we don't. I'm not telling you to invest in shares. I'm okay. telling you go get a job. Go get a job. Yeah. Find in something the, to do. Find something to do to f uh, feed yourself, to pay your rent, and all those things. Yes. Then after that, uh, cover that, ensure that income with an emergency fund mm -hmm. of sorts. And then once that emergency fund is set, it, it, there's still potential of it running out, which will take you back to ground zero. Mm -hmm. So that's why we start investing, right now. 
uh, there are two instances where debt comes in. Mm -hmm. One one in a good way, one in a not so good way. Uh -huh. Because I'm not one of those who says debt is bad, don't borrow, and all those things. The people who have such hard stance on debt, but debt is a tool. So once you mm. understand how to incorporate it within your financial plan, then it can be useful. Now, somebody who goes, who's at the bottom of the tier, mm -hmm. right, uh, they don't have an income. And those are the times where you're desperate and you're trying to borrow yes. and you're trying to do ABCD. So you, the, the easy access makes it very, um, you, it, it makes you susceptible to mm. be taken advantage of. First mm. of all, you're desperate. Yes. First of all, it's just there. Then, but now the, on the other side is that you forget that this money is not yours. It has to be paid has back. To be paid but back. you don't have income to pay it back. Uh -huh. So you dig a deeper hole mm. for yourself. Now that's problematic. Now, when they have the job, right, and they have some income coming in. Yes. Uh, so that means that essentially, they have a way of taking care of themselves. Yes. But if you're not planning properly, then you find that at some point there's too much month at the end of the money. Mm -hmm. And so you get again tempted to to borrow to, to borrow to, something. To do the to fill yes. the gap. Yeah. And this is the um this is interesting because I asked a few people a while back, what does it, wh wh where is it, why, when is a good debt a good debt? Mm -hmm. um, and one of them was like, when you have a job, because then you can pay it off. <laughs> 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 wow. Which is not necessarily true, right? Because mm. then they're thinking about the fact that I can borrow and I have income coming in, which is better than the one who did not have. have anything, yeah. yes. But the problem there is that in instances, it just means that you are at some point living above your means, so mm -hmm. you are not matching your income to your expenses mm. to a great extent you should match your income to expenses and then have some left so that you can you can invest, invest. or save mm. yeah so in those two instances debt can be detrimental okay yeah if you're not conscious about the purpose and uh, what it's supposed to be for mm -hmm. now when you are at the point of trying to to invest and build wealth mm -hmm. debt can be a very useful tool Mm. Yeah. So what you need to do is to be conscious because let's say I'm trying to buy a house. Yeah. This house will cost me 10 million shillings mm -hmm. to purchase. Um, and I decide I'm going to save for it. Right now, depending yes. on how much money you make, that will determine how long it will take you to save to enough. Save enough. Yeah. yeah. Now for the average Kenyan, it will take significant amount of time. Uh, such that by the time maybe you have that 10 million, the house is now 15 million. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So it might make sense to to save a little bit of it mm. and then borrow a little bit of it, right? So that then you don't lose out on the on the value mm -hmm. of the of the property by the time you're trying to purchase it. Yeah. In which case then you have you have borrowed to build to create your build your net worth because that mm -hmm. now in that instance that period of time when the value goes up you already own it you it's yours it, yeah. yeah so you have benefited from that increase in value uh -huh. of the property um, then so so that that in that instance then you what now you need to figure out now is um, how does this debt fit into my budget mm -hmm. uh, so that now you're saying I can afford it yeah. I can afford it within the budget. But another way of measuring whether or not you can afford it is looking at the cost of borrowing, which a lot of people a lot don't. Of, I, a lot of people don't even know what the yeah. cost of borrowing is. Yeah, because so what is cost of borrowing. Cost of borrowing is what does it cost you to get that money that you are you you're you are accessing to mm -hmm. that ten million. Uh, you will not pay ten million back. Yeah. They will charge you an interest. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the basic cost. The at the mm -hmm. minimum you should be knowing how much interest they are charging mm. you for borrowing from them. But there are some other costs that people don't think about, like bank charges and third party mm -hmm. costs. Yeah. So there's something called the APR or the annual percentage rate, yeah. which is the total cost of your loan or whatever you're borrowing, especially mm -hmm. if you're borrowing from a uh, a bank or financial mm. institution like a bank, yeah. right? So you, you should incorporate all that and then determine uh, whether or not you can afford it. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, especially for uh, long uh, debt like mortgages, yeah. it becomes more expensive the longer you hold it, right? And so when you're looking at the total costs, when we do some of those math, then people realize, actually, I cannot afford it. Mm -hmm. Right now in my budget, it sits well. But when I look at the total Interest, interest I'll have to pay yeah. on it. I don't think I can afford it. So it's it's good to balance 
both sides. Mm -hmm. Can you afford it in terms of it sits well, the monthly payments sit well in your budget? But even then, I always say, if they tell you that it will take you 25K per month to pay, ask yourself whether you can do a 30 or a 35 yeah. per month so yeah. that you are always paying more than the minimum required. Mm -hmm. That ultimately lowers the cost. And that means that now the, the loan is working for you Right, in, in terms of building wealth, uh, you always want to try and make sure that the total value you're getting from the thing you borrowed from yeah. is higher than what it cost you to borrow. Uh -huh. Yeah, so okay. if it cost you 12% uh, per annum to mm -hmm. borrow, are you getting higher return than 12% on the other side? The so other that side. You're, you're actually leveraging and taking advantage of the loan. Uh, the wealthy people have learned how to m create wealth with other people's money. Mm -hmm. So it's a skill, but you have to really be good at doing the numbers so mm -hmm. that you don't get yourself in more trouble. Okay. What about those people who've already gotten themselves into this cycle mm. where th unless they borrow, they can't survive mm. every month? Yes, yeah. they have a source of income, mm -hmm. but they've gotten themselves into that place and you only what was it to number to yeah yeah how do you break free from that because if you don't break free from that you you can't be able to to get to what we are talking about yeah yeah you know? so um so two things about that mm. number one it means that uh, you need to direct more money towards paying off debt mm -hmm. that's 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 it so how do you do that N you'll either cut down your expenses yes or find ways of making more money Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because either way, uh, based on where you are right now, the cycle cannot be broken until a little bit more is actually yes. put into the pot. Yes. So now the question is, where, th where is this a little bit more coming from? It could come from your already existing. So that means you, yes, I can afford to live here, mm -hmm. but could I live Don't somewhere read. else yeah. so that I can use that extra to pay off this loan? Mm -hmm. That's the only way you'll come out. Otherwise, it's really, it's a cycle. Mm. It's it's really a cycle. So meaning you have to be ready to make sacrifices. You have to, and that's really the difficult part. Yeah. Yeah. Because w when we start thinking about, I have accustomed myself to yes. this lifestyle. <laughs> yes. And now you're asking me to, then now you're co conscious about what the rest of the people will think about mm -hmm. you, what your family will think about you. But really, you have to you have to have a long term kind of thinking. Yeah. Right. So you're thinking about what, the, how does it make me look now vis a vis. Uh, will I be financially healthy in the long term? Yes. Because we tend to bury our head in the sand and think, oh, ukumbele kutajipanga tu, somehow. Somehow things will work somehow out. Somehow things will work out. Yes. And then they don't. And then now you find that the 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 problem is becoming ba wasa and wasa mm -hmm. because you're holding the, lo the loan for so long yeah. and it's just escalating. Okay. Mm. Okay. Let's talk about uh, the next step, which I think is uh, creating different sources of income yeah which which we talk a lot of, a lot about side hustles yeah uh, but you start it today tomorrow it's not functioning you mm -hmm. start it today after a month it's gone mm. and then you have people who have resources i am sure you've been asked this question and i'm sure you've seen these questions on social media mm. i have 200 <laughs> what, what business can, business can, can, I, can I start, start? I yeah, really for many people, like they that. don't know they don't know what to do. Mm. So, what can you tell us about this? Because I think we live in an age now mm. where, for many people, yeah. one source of income is not enough. It's not enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't like that question. First of all, let me just say that <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. I do feel like um, uh, that the the thought process behind that question mm -hmm. is outward. And, and, and it needs to be inward. Okay. Yeah. You should be, okay, you should be able to look at, be conscious of what's going on in your environment. Mm -hmm. And you also need to be conscious about what you have on the inside, right? In yeah. terms of yeah. what do I know, what do I have, vis-a-vis -vis what do people want and what do people mm -hmm. need? Because you need to match the two. Yeah. The, it's, it's a, it's a, semi lazy way of going about it when you ask what can I do because you want other people to mm. to, to 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 determine the thing for you but if I determine it for you you are the one who's going to have to execute yes. so when you're executing 
you know, a struggle if I told you based on my my strengths <laughs> or yeah. my my own understanding and then I force you to do it. So the, it's a longer process to now do some work, internal work. Now the internal work means that you have to look at your skill set, you have to think, look at um, your, your professional experience, mm -hmm. you have to look at whatever you have that's an advantage, your networks. It, you, you need to be conscious about what what you have in your hands. You know how how God asked Moses, Moses yes. yeah. what, what, what is it that you have in your hands? Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. We always assume I have nothing. Yeah. I don't know where to start. I have nothing. Now, as believers, these are conversations we need to be having with God mm -hmm. because uh, Genesis 2, 26, 28, they're about God's, God. The Bible says that God blessed us. And by blessing us, he, he, it means that he empowered us to be able to, to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And even by creating us like him, it means that there are certain capacities, capabilities that we have okay. internally, unutilized, uh, that needs to come forth. And having conversations with him and just asking, by the mm. way, so you open my eyes, let me yeah. see, what is it that you have given me? What is it that you have shown me and uh, uh, that, that I have within my hands? And then now start having a conversation with him about that. The other thing you can have a conversation about with God is mm. show me the problems that the world has, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, God has called us to a ministry of reconciliation. So there are certain things that, that need to be reconciled back to God. Yes. And he has already empowered us with that, with that ability. Mm -hmm. So when you have the ability and you can see what the problem is, then there's, a, there's opportunity there for, for you to be productive. Let me give a personal testimony. Okay. Uh, uh, about 2019, there about, I was just starting my, my current business, mm -hmm. my coaching business. Yeah. And if there's anything about this coaching business is that it's not... It doesn't grow overnight. Mm. So I was still in a season of letting people know who I am and what yeah, I can what do and all offer. those things. Yeah. But at the same time, there was a lot of pressure or fi on, fina on my finances mm -hmm. because um, things were changing and I, have, I was having to take control of a lot of my, my money. Yeah. And so I had a conversation with God and I told God, I need at least X number of shillings to be able mm -hmm. to move uh, put a deposit on a house and do all the things yeah, yeah. To, to get started. And when I started having that conversation with God, God started reminding me of ideas I had had in the past. Ooh. Yeah, that I kind of just, you know, you write things and then you forget yeah. about it. I'm big on when I'm studying the Bible, I take my notes, I write notes. I'm very big on that. And I remember at some point, uh, I loved doing that so much that I, I, I wrote in my, in my notebook that I was writing at that time, I mm. said, I should talk to people about how to study Bible, the Bible in depth. Like it was just an idea. I was mm -hmm. like, because people say Bible study is boring, but yeah. I was enjoying it so much. So what was the difference? There was something there. But then I, later on, I realized part of what is making it enjoyable is the way I was doing it, mm -hmm. right? And so then I started thinking, oh, I should create a notebook because all of these are just plain notebooks. Yeah. I want to create a notebook that allows me to follow my system. Mm -hmm. All those things are things I had written while I was doing Bible study. Yeah. So at that point when I needed the money, God reminded me of that. Of idea. that yeah. And so we got to the ground and started mm -hmm. designing this thing. Right, and I designed it, and I included God in the process because I had only one idea in mm -hmm. my head mm -hmm. of how I do it. And then later on, a few days later, I'd done it. I actually, gone to the printer. God said, "What about somebody who's never done Bible study before? Mm -hmm. Could you create something that could b guide them, basically?" Yeah. Yeah. And it's not a typical Bible study. Um, um, what do they call them? The books that have the questions. It's just. Mm -hmm allowing people to choose whatever they want to study but then have a process, have of, a doing process of doing yes, it yes that was the idea so i i did what god asked me as well that was in december of 2019 mm. and i went on facebook that day and i told people hey guys i have these two things i yeah. have created at that point they were still actually in the printer i was using um what samples yeah so i told people i have these two journals i've created this is what you can do this is a mm. uh, Immediately, people started. This is now my community. People who know me yeah, on Facebook. Your community. Yeah. Yes. So they bought, mm. um, and then you know, there's only so much you can do with with people who mm. know you. Mm. So I decided, let me start from scratch. Let me reach people who don't know me. Yeah. So I went on Instagram and I started a page from scratch, mm. and I started telling them, "This is why you need to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is why it's important. 
this is what you can do. This is why it's necessary to spend time with God. This is a tool you can use. Mm -hmm. In that one month, because I printed 200 copies, mm. I sold out the second version, the one that God told me. Yes. <laughs> because that was where the need was, yes. and God knew there's a need there. Yeah. In, the first, in the first month, I sold out. By the second month, I had sold the others. Mm -hmm. So I completely actually had all the needs that I needed met mm -hmm. uh, at that time because God had shown me, and I partnered with God to find a solution and in that whole year, that actually, after that was the COVID year, yeah. that entire year, it was this one business that sustained me, wow. right? So it's, it's, it's rather than going to ask people, what can I do with this money? Start asking God, what, what have you enabled me to do? Because this was a passion I had. Mm. It was a skill I had. It was a hobby I had. Mm. And all of this combined, and, I, and started, God started showing me, actually, people out here, they, they are not taught. You know, they are very heavy yeah. on church and the pastor yeah. knows all things. Can you empower them to do it themselves? And I like your happened. idea because it is a simple idea. It is simple. I think sometimes we want to look for complicated things. Mm. Yeah, or we want to do something that other people are doing and it seems to be working. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Because this one seems like, oh, well, who will buy it? Is it really necessary? <laughs> Yeah, kabla ni design ni print na ni ngangane na watu. I'd rather sell clothes because yeah. so and so is selling sell clothes. And it's working. And it seems like, yeah. like it's working. So and so has an impressive shop and it's and working. And it's working. You know, I love what you're sharing because it connects with what we were sharing in the previous hour. Mm. We were talking about uh, confidence. Mm. It's how sometimes we lose confidence mm. because we are thinking about our own abilities. Yeah. But we should have confidence in, in God. In God, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so that means that even the, the bigger skill that you need to have is actually that ability to communicate with yes, God. Yes, yes. Yeah, because he knows all things. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, he can tell you all things and, and show you all things. Yeah. But we are looking externally for external ideas, mm -hmm. the so-called experts. Yes. And yet they, they also maybe don't believe what we believe. Very true. Yeah, and they don't have the kind of connection that God wants us to have with him. Wow. That's our secret sauce. That's our secret sauce. Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. We are talking about financial freedom, the cycle of financial freedom. Maybe you have a question uh, this morning. Maybe you have, God gave you an idea now, Mila Lea, too. <laughs> yeah, pointing at myself as I point at you. <laughs> Let me point this way. Three are pointing at me. Because when she said that, a lot of light bulbs went on. You know, some of the prayers we are praying, God is saying, but I gave you the answer mm. three years ago. Mm -hmm. You haven't done anything with it yeah. because you don't really trust me. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so talk to us on 20316 for SMS and WhatsApp 0786-316-316. Went out into the streets to ask people, what does financial freedom mean to you? Listen to what they said. Financial freedom to me, it's when I am able to buy what I need. Nile kukua kwa ile situation ama status inye you can actually pay your bills. Unaweza kuwa enough money to afford one or two, three things. Unakuwa free na finance. Yani inamanisha kwamba, hata kama maisha na magumu, unabitia some crisis ya finance. Saisi mambo, vitu vyakula vipanda, mafuta ya miko ju, ju miko ju. Asu nakuta ya kwamba, wakati ya mbapo, unabitia halimumu ya maisha, sasa hapo ndi unakuta kuna problem ya finance. It means that you can make your own independent decision without consulting other people. You can say, I will stay here, I will spend on this, you can eat what you want, you can work with the, whoever you want to work in the places of your choice, or you can take your children to the school of your choice. Okay, great. What about you? What does financial freedom mean to you? It means different things to different people. Kunam tutu bora, you know, their, their, their needs are taken care of. You know, they have their account space somewhere, two bedroom house, or even a one bedroom house, they are not paying rent. They have enough to feed themselves, they have enough for transport, and to help people here and there, and they're saying, miniko sawa. Kuna mwingine lazima nyumba ikue mansion. So we are different people with different ideologies. So it's very important for you to answer that question. What does financial freedom mean to you? Yeah. I can see questions coming in and comments. I love the discussion today. True financial freedom is achievable. And true, ask God 
before consulting anyone. Yes, mm -hmm. we have to talk to God. Ah, salams, Pastor Jimo. During the financial clinic last week, the guest mentioned a couple who have a huge God-given dream and assignment. Assuming she's back on the show today, yes, she is, and she does not mind disclosing, and she will not be violating client trust. Please ask her, Kwani, how much money does that particular dream require? That even it, it startled her as a financial consultant. And how I'll answer that is not in numbers. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the thing. It's the, the, the vision. That's what uh -huh. that's what startled me. Because we didn't even go into the numbers because okay. just the idea of bringing forth this thing mm -hmm. was was immense. Was huge. It was huge. So and because it was that that huge, yeah. the the um, trying to get into the numbers is what we they were avoiding, uh -huh. so that they can figure out how much is this thing mm. going to uh, going to cost us. And then mm. also you have to compare what mm. the vision is vis-a-vis -vis where they are actually in terms of their income to mm. say mm. that mm. the money is a lot. Yeah. You know when you're making when you're making let's say as a couple the let's say the family household was making maybe a, a net of 400,000 mm -hmm. right and then god says there's this thing i want you to do mm -hmm. but it's going to cost you like 50 million to do it yes. right so the, there's a disparity between what they are trying to where they are and what it is they're trying to, to do yes. so i won't say what it was exactly but just imagine that that vision and it can be different for different people mm. let's even the example i've just used for myself yeah because for me to print those those uh journals required some some, some sort of some investment sort of investment yeah which at that point i was not earning an income mm -hmm. and so it could be huge it's huge it's because yes. i don't know i don't know where to get started yeah, yeah. so whatever vision and, and normally one of the things you one of the ways you know it's from god is because it will scare you like mm -hmm. kuna, mm -hmm. kuna because yeah. God does not ask us to do small things, right? Mm. His, his kingdom is big, his vision is big. Yes. And so sometimes when he tells us all the things, we cower away. So he just tells us step by step, step by step, so that you don't you don't run away. But mm -hmm. for this particular couple, I could the 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 thing was like maybe even as big as buying an island and creating a community out of the island. Mm -hmm. It's that that, it's kind, that kind of, of a project. Big vision, yeah. Wow. Mm. Ah, yeah. This part, that part, hearing and designing God's leading, that's the part I need a lot of help. Fortunate to have multiple streams, but still trapped, still trapped to employment and living away from home. And I need some activity that directly engages me and my wife. Mm. I think I'll, that for, I've realized this, that I've seen two kinds of people. Mm. I've seen people who have an eye for opportunities mm. and they take risks. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I have a friend of mine called Richie. He's that kind of a person. Mm -hmm. He has nothing but a million ideas. <laughs> and he starts something and it blossoms and you're thinking, I want you all to the people we say, who you can be a Yeah. Then there's the rest of us. When somebody does something, we are thinking, why didn't I think, think of, of that? It. Yeah. it was right before me. It yeah. was here. Yeah. Why didn't I think of it? Yeah. Can I, can I, can I surprise you? Tell me. Me si nam kona biashara. Kona kili biashara. To be quite honest, mm. I do feel like I make a very good employee. Mm -hmm. And I only went into business because God said go into business. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I trusted God in that process mm -hmm. and and i didn't know what it was going to become the way i grew up and the environment i grew up in business was not like it was not a thing that i was shown is possible yes yeah and me i've always been those, that kind of person i want to know i am where god wants me to be mm -hmm. I'm, i want to know i'm doing what god wants me to be so yes. anytime i feel like hey, am i am i i go back and have a conversation with god mm -hmm. am i in the right place am i doing the right thing mm -hmm. and that's how god now started telling me no this is what you want me you need to be doing because yeah. it wasn't about the business it was about the me partnering with god it's just that in order to partner with God, it had to be set up in a business mm -hmm. format. And that's how I found myself there. There are those people who are like, one minute, anauza, mango, next minute, kitchen items, yes. next minute, shoes. Yes. They're moving around the place, mm -hmm. uh, wherever the money can be made. 
I'm really not that kind of person. Mm. But I'm the kind of person who, when I'm persuaded that this is a need and this is something God wants me to do and this is how I can create, because I still had to learn how to run a business. Yeah. It wasn't something I had internally, but because it was an instruction, I had to equip myself yeah. and s now learn how to do it. And that's possible for, for everyone. Yeah. If you commit to learn something, you can learn it and do it and learn on the job. Okay. A lot of the things I learned on the job of this this business job. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are people who I feel like are really called into business and mm -hmm. they have that but there are those of us who, it's not the business that we are called to, it's the impact of the, the work ah, that we are called to. Yes. And if you are tapping into that, that's what I was saying last week, that seek, seek the kingdom, mm -hmm. because that is mm -hmm. what the kingdom has required of you. Yes. Then God makes the things available. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. How, how about inflation? How, how do we factor inflation into this conversation? Mm. If I'm thinking of getting to the place where I am, financially free or financially independent, mm. inflation is a panda killer mwaka. Yeah. So how do I factor in yeah. that into all there are this? Two, there are two types of inflation. Mm. One is called a lifestyle inflation. Mm -hmm. The other is called the just economic inflation, just okay. the, farm, the market forces, yeah. right? Now, lifestyle inflation means that that you, you inflate the cost of your lifestyle uh -huh. because money becomes available. Yeah. So, you know, like... Let's say you are living on 50,000 shillings yes. per month. And then you do a good job, me pata salary, me fika 85,000. Ah. You were living on that 50,000 and it was, it it, was it enough. It was enough. Yes. But now all of a sudden there's a 30,000 extra. Ah. So now we can do this and we can yes. do this and we can do this. So mm -hmm. you, have, you have ballooned what it costs to live your life or you have created a new level of lifestyle yeah. that was not necessary because somehow you were making it do before, mm -hmm. right? So you need, those are the w one kind of inflation that you can avoid. Yes. You can avoid and be just, but you have to go, you have to think into the future and say, remember what we said last time that this is the vision, this is where we are going, mm. this is how much it will cost me to, go, to get there. So that means that on that journey, there is money you're directing towards that long-term vision. Yes. While you're on that journey, money will come unexpectedly, unexpectedly. A bonus here, mm -hmm. a salary increase there. Now, the way to get to your vision faster is to direct that extra money there. Uh -huh. But what we do is we direct it towards our living expenses. Mm. So before you know it, you're just ballooning, you're ballooning, you're ballooning. Yeah. And you're like, ah, now I can't afford this lifestyle anymore. You need more. You know, oh, now I have 30K. See, I can buy a car and take mm. that 30K and, buy and pay a loan. Mm. Those, those, are the, those are the lifestyle ex, uh, inflation mm -hmm. that we should try and avoid. Mm. Now, generally, in any country, in, in the entire world, the cost of living goes up. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And there's, in 2023, to Lielewa, <laughs> what inflation <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, yes. We understood that there's such a thing as inflation, mm. and this is how it, it, it affects your yes. life. Yes. And this is now, this is the reason I tell people you need to invest. Because mm -hmm. inflation, inflation, there's this, we talked about compound interest. Inflation compounds. Yeah. But so does your investment. So does your investment. So mm -hmm. it's just that for you to overcome this, this inflation, your investments need to be compounding at a faster, a higher rate mm -hmm. than the inflation. So it's always important to know, generally speaking, in our country, what's the inflation rate? Five percent, six percent, seven. Last time, Tuli, last year, Tuli Fika, nine, almost ten percent, mm. right? But on average, we go between five and seven percent. Yeah. So if I am putting my money where I am earning five percent, I am losing. You're losing. Yes. 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 So I need to be putting it somewhere where it's earning higher than the inflation, the inflation rate. rate, so that as the as the years go by and the cost of living goes up, mm. the investments also match and even have excess of me being able to cater for those. Okay. It's, un it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. Then, yeah. Mm. But the lifestyle one is avoidable. The lifestyle one is avoidable. Yes. Apple, <laughs> to a channel on social media and peer pressure. Yeah. Uh, you want to catch up with the Joneses and the Joneses were end up. Yes. To are trying to, to impress. Or they are faking it. Or they are faking it, mm. yes. <laughs> Nowadays a lot of people fake. Mm. This one says, good morning. I'm Jacqueline from Nakuru, from Kisumu. Please have been saving through Changa Box and I'm sure saving lock account. But I never reach my target. I end up using all the money. <laughs> Is there any other order? 
Mm. No, there's no other order. The question you need to be asking is what, what, um, what is making you withdraw yeah. the money? Yeah. I usually tell people, one of the things that I always ask my clients before they work is like, what do you want to learn about money? Mm -hmm. uh, 90% of the time they'll say, I want to know how to make money work for me. Yes. Right? Money and finance is very rational. It's like physics. You know how in physics mm. we used to be told whatever goes up must come down. Yes. There are the laws and the principles yes. of physics. It applies to anyone. You apply the formula, you get the you answer. You get the answer. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is with money as well. You know, if I tell you, uh, put 10,000 here mm -hmm. at 10% for the next 10 years, anyone who does it will get the same results. get the same results. Whether you are president, Ruto, yes. or my five-year-old nephew yes. <laughs> is able to do it, the results are the same. So yeah. that's the law, that's the principle at work. Uh -huh. The challenge is between year one and year 10, not many people get there. Yes. Yeah? It's those ones. Oh, kuna ka trip to Dubai. Sini kuna pesa hapo. Sani kule dividend ya risi. Yeah. Kuna ile nini, so and so is in sick. Is sick, they need money. Wacha ni kule yo. So what you're doing is you're continuously interrupting the law that is at work. I like that. Mm -hmm. You're interrupting the law that is at work. So yes. you actually never see the results. That's why she never sees it. She never gets to what she's trying to do, right? Because the law keeps being broken. Yeah. And somehow you expect to see the end of money. So one of the things I tell people is that if you want to... You want, ma you want money to work for you. Mm -hmm. Leave money alone. Leave mo <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> leave it alone. Leave it alone. And if you can't leave it alone, now ask yourself, what are these things that keep making me interrupt mm. the law? There are things that keep making you interrupt the law. Identify them. Yeah. Find solutions for them so that the law can always be at work. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the that's difference between this is how money works and this is how I interact with money. So there's mm -hmm. a psychology of money, which is individuals and their, their reasoning and their logic. What is that logic that makes you feel like, let me withdraw this one. Mm. Deal with that one. So that now, ultimately, 10 years will pass and you'll see yes. that money has actually done the thing for you. Mm. Mm. Would also just be saving without a purpose and issue. Yes, that's actually an issue as well. So yeah. you need you need motivation for mm -hmm. whatever whatever it is you're saving you're for. You're saving let, for yeah. Let, let's assume we have two people. Um, the one saves because they've been told it's that good it's to good to save. Yes. Put some money aside. Mm. Be consistent. ATC. They are disciplined. They put five hundred. Now they are five hundred. On this other side, they have somebody. You have someone who's trying to buy a, an apartment, and mm -hmm. they're trying to save enough money mm -hmm. to put a down payment yes. on that thing. Yes. Then for both of them, somebody comes and says, oh, they gives you a nice sob story, and they're like, oh, please help me with money, etc., yes. etc. Now, if you have that money there that doesn't have a name, you're mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Sin yeah. Nini. on this other side, somebody who's trying to buy an apartment will be like, they know what is at risk. Uh -huh. If I give this money, this is what is at risk. I will yeah. not be able to meet this. Yeah. this goal and so they will think twice it doesn't mm -hmm. mean they might not give but they will think, they twice. Will think twice it will yes. not be as easy yeah and so when you give your savings or whatever savings accounts whatever things you're working on when you give your money a name a name that's a boundary first you create with yourself mm. right so you know that i have money but it is for a b c d yes. if you don't have that then it's very easy for other people to come and make your problem, yeah, their problems, your problem yeah. with your for your money, right? So mm. you will accommodate a lot of that. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a, a sense of direction and you have given that money work to do, then it's much easier to, for you to communicate mm -hmm. to that people. Like, I do have money, but it's not for this. Okay. Or I do have money, it's for this. So even if I give, I can't give you all of it. Yeah. 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 So yeah. like you start thinking objectively from there. But if it doesn't have any money, that's how you keep withdrawing that's how mm. you you find that it's it's going to other things that you are you had not you really had not planned yeah mm. uh, we have like uh, two three minutes mm. what can you tell us about investments because we've we, we hear a lot of talk about investment invest mm. invest mm. invest mm. you know what, what how does investment fit into this cycle investment is the thing that will now actually get you to that place of financial freedom, stroke independence, okay. because we are as much as possible targeting to have that money coming in passively. And mm -hmm. so when I talk about investment, I'm also talking about passive investment, because yeah. you can also do an active investment like a business, 
Uh, real estate can also be very active sometimes mm -hmm. depending on how you run it. So as if you want both the income and the time, mm. right, mm. then you need to make this passive into the financial markets. Okay. So you want to understand what are the uh, opportunities available. Gone are the days where when somebody said investment, it either meant real estate or mm. business. Yeah. There are so many other products now. Our market has developed, it has grown. And so you want to be literate about what opportunities are there, mm -hmm. what is our, the rate of return on them, yeah. and which one matches what I'm trying to do. Uh -huh. That's I, I think that's a big uh, missing gap that people hear, oh, kuna bonds, there's bills, uh, yeah. there's this. So you just have money, let me do it, let me do it, let me do it. And so you do all these things, but you don't know what the bottom line is, is yes. what is the thing I'm going for. Mm. And that's why we go back to where we started, where we said you have to know where you're going. Where you're going. What are you trying to do? Yeah. Not all investments are for you. Yeah. Because they either they don't match your time frame, mm -hmm. they don't match your goal, they don't, they don't help you achieve what you are trying to do. But if you don't know what you are trying to do, you will try all things yeah. and you will get burned in the mm -hmm. process. So it's important to first have a vision then match it with the right investment. Okay. Mm. Parting shot as we conclude this series. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> this, I've said so many things. All of them are so important. Mm. But I would say that um, don't, don't leave God out of the money conversation. Yeah. yeah? yeah. What, what it does when you leave God out of it is that it puts you at risk as like to being like the rest of the world, mm. which he has not called us to be. Mm. You are missing out on the special direction and leading that yes. he has because he knows all things, right? N just as much as you would talk to him about your children, about um, your heal emotional healing and mm. all those things, he wants to know and be part of your entire of your life in entirety. Yeah. So if you talk to him and tell him, I have a problem with money. I'm missing this. I don't have this. I don't have this. He's your father. Like mm -hmm. it says that he, how much more can he give you? If us, if earthly fathers know how to, yeah. to provide, how much more our father? So he has the solutions for you. Engage him in that process. So even exercise yourself a lot more mm. in building that relationship with him, being close to him yes. so that you can hear the, the directions that he has for you. Gosh, we have so much um, access to so much by being believers, mm. but we are barely tapping into it. Wow. Mm. Juliet, thank you. Okay. Truly appreciate. Mm. And keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. Awesome. Yeah. My friend, Clinic Nafunga, Dr. Who you just strike. Another could continue to Dr. I hope you've learned something from this series. It's possible to get to financial freedom. It is not an instant thing. It takes time, it takes a plan, and it takes work. So begin the journey. Until next week, for another interesting conversation on the Financial Clinic, do have a good day and God bless. For watching, remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get notified whenever we upload new fresh content every day. Stay tuned and enjoy fresh uplifting content.